Well, everybody, that was the Hawks team song and they did have a wonderful victory last weekend and rugby's all about singing at the end of the day. Nothing better than that. Welcome to the third episode of Ruck Off. Can't believe we're still here and we've got rid of our general manager this week so everyone can rest well. And we've got someone with a bigger head than me. He's got a few nicknames around the place. Some, some know him as Mobby. Some know him, unfortunately, as the Unicorn. And he's certainly not a mythical creature. He's here and he's the first grade university coach Mark O'Brien. Mark, how are you? I'm well, Gareth. Thanks, uh, <coughs> thanks for having me here. Uh, I, I, I am actually here. I, I'm, I am not mythical, but uh, I mean, who, whoever the man was who came up with that name, uh, I'd, I'd like to know. I'd, I'd like to buy him a beer because I think it's, uh, I think it's genius. I think it is genius, and certainly one you've, you've definitely played up to over the past. You're one of the characters of this Rams NHRU, definitely for sure. You've been around what, 20 years almost. Uh, Long time. You played overseas as well. Played overseas. Yeah, played a season in uh, in Italy over at uh, Benevento, uh, the place is, and um, that was around 2004, 2004. So uh, that was that was certainly a great experience there. Yeah, definitely. You're with the Seahorse uh, this year. It perplexes me, the Seahorse, the actual emblem, because it is an actual hermaphrodite. Are you, in fact, a hermaphrodite, Mark? Uh, on, on recent inspection, about, um, I guess, 15 minutes ago, no. Uh, at, uh, well, as far as I know, yeah. So uh, I'm, uh, it's all there. Uh, the male parts, I, I think, so. But the female parts aren't there. You I, can confirm I, that. I, I can confirm, unless it's a. I guess it's less, uh, unless it's late on a Saturday night, and, and maybe do the old sort of tuck away, um, and uh, you know dance around in front of blokes or something like that. Then uh, I, I guess it could be viewed like that. But uh, no, all, all male at the moment. But. Yeah, very good. And you have taken over the helm this year from the hog, the brothers Hog. Yeah. How's that going? And and are you enjoying it, or, or do you feel more stress? You look, uh, you look relaxed. It is. It's a very difficult job, um, you know, taking over from um, from Tony. I mean, he, he is still there and he is still helping me out. Uh, I guess the only reason why it sort of came about is... Is he getting in the way? <laughs> no, he's... Uh, Oggy's very good, um, uh, very good support person to have there. Um, he's the boss of the coppers, uh, water police up at... Um, uh, Port Stevens is. Water rat. Uh, he is a water rat. Uh, so just very busy at work and, and he just said, look, he, he couldn't commit full time to, to the job and, and asked that I would take over, but he, he is still there um, helping me out and supporting me along the way. Well, you've been at a couple of clubs. I guess Hamilton is where you won most of your grand finals or all your grand finals. Um, and also Southern Beach as well. Tell us the difference between the three clubs and, and what it's like to be a three club man. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, look, all, all clubs are different. Um, I, I guess the the one thing about the clubs that is the same is that there, there's always good people there. there there's always a, um, you know, a, a good environment to be there. Hamilton's got a, a, a really strong um, old boys network there and, and uh, you know, they're, they're a very, very quality quality club and, and quality team. Uh, unfortunately, at the time when, when I was there, I didn't see myself uh, getting a lot of uh, more first grade. There's some there was some good second rows there, so I decided to move on. Uh, went to Southern Beaches there for a couple of years, um, and then an opportunity came up to coach uh, at uni, so I, I wanted to take that. Yeah, very good. Getting back to I guess your Southern Beaches days, maybe uh, the coaching staff there. It's changed now. Going over to Lake Macquarie. Is is this a good thing for Southern Beaches? Do you think? Um, look the. You know, all, all coaches are, are different. Um, all coaches run a club in a different way. Um, you know, Tim came over to Southern Beaches and, and, and really lifted them up, I guess, to that highlight in 2014 where uh, they lost the grand final. Um, and then, un unfortunately, last year he, he got a bit crook. Um, Southern Beaches have then decided to um, put someone else in, put Johan in, and, and, and Tim's now moved on. So, as I said, you know, coaches are all, all different, are all going to put their different mark um, on, a, on a club. And, um, you know, Southern Beaches, obviously at the moment, have lost a few players to Lake Macquarie, and, uh, and I guess it's sort of rebuilding. But, um, you know, they, they've got, a, got some good people there. You know, you've got uh, Johan, uh, John Delore, guys like that, who are sort of getting back involved and, um, you know, I guess trying to, trying to help the club out this season. Yeah, very good. And getting back to the university side, it is hard, I guess, for university to, to keep players and, and compete those guys because a lot of players come to uni, move away for various reasons. Um, I guess, you, I mean, you played a lot of junior football uh, with the Wildfires. Uh, Bagsy, he, he's got a good, good association uh, with the university as well, so he's very good at that sort of junior level. 
is there is there a plan for you guys to help keep and develop those players that, that sort of want to move on? Yeah, what I'm really trying to put in at the moment is um, just having conversations with players and finding out, you know, what's your degree, when do you finish, what are your plans after uni, because um, a lot of them, uh, yes, they want to move on, um, but I guess if we can provide an environment in particular where they're going to pick up some, some sort of employment, um, that's something that we're, that we're after. Uh, and so by identifying, you know, who are our players, when do they graduate, and, and I guess trying to get our old boys network heavily involved as well and trying to link those guys up with, with someone out there to try to keep them in Newcastle. And, and I think that that's probably a way that we can um, get, the, get the Seahorse to, to get, get back to a, a strong club um, by keeping those players around. Yeah, well, definitely. The, the Seahorse definitely getting impregnated at the moment, uh, hermaphrodite style. Of course, out there at university, have you got into the culture back, getting back to school, like, as in Fletch or, or you know, no, Frank I, the Tank? I'm, I was just, I was just going to say a bit more like Frank the Tank. Um, you know, we, we had a bus trip up to uh, up to Port Macquarie uh, earlier on in the season, and then uh, just on a Sunday over, a couple of boys took me back to uh, back to Ted's there. So, uh, you know, the the old man, the big man on campus, you know, a bit of Frank the Tank feeling up again. So. Yeah, very good. And of course, always first to put his hand up for, for the boat race, Mark O'Brien. We're going to go through last week's uh, matches right now. A couple of good ones. Big scores out there if you got involved in the top better fantasy tournament. A couple of margins blew out. I guess going through the first one, your game, uh, Mark, against Southern Beach is close at half time. Uh, talk us through that because, I mean, you guys certainly looked, looked the goods early on. Yeah, look, I, I thought we played a very, very good first half. Um, we were up 15 now and then um, uh, lead to two quick, fairly quick tries in. Um, we got to the half time, or I thought we were sort of in control of the game, but um, look, we, we do have an inexperienced back line and, and at this stage, um, some of these guys are having a little bit of difficulty finishing out a game. Um, we then just got punished for the next, you know, sort of 20, 25 minutes after that and, and basically er every error that we made. Um, but just turn that into points. Yeah, yeah definitely. Looking at the highlights now, Delore had a big game, and so so did uh, Var as well. Getting to the the Maitland Nelson Bay game, I thought it might have been a bit closer than it was. But Maitland, I mean, you guys are playing them this week, but they look pretty good this year, mate. Yeah, look, I'll, I've just finished watching uh, this morning. Watched um, the Maitland Nelson Bay game. Um, you know, it was 17 nil at half time. Um, you know, I, I thought the Bay were, were pretty gritty and, and, and pretty gutsy there. I, I just think at the moment they're probably lacking a little bit of match fitness. Um, and, you know, Maitland's tries early on were just sort of uh, not, not really from any well-structured piece or anything like that. They just sort of busted through the line. But I think Nelson Bay will certainly improve as the year goes on. Wanderers late, Macquarie was at number two sports ground. And I'll tell you what, the, the, the first grade game was pretty close at half time. But... Oh, gee, late, late Macquarie in the lower grades, they're getting beat by 100 points a week. Something kind of has to be done, I think, Mark. Yeah, look, that's, it's, I guess, a little bit similar to what was happening last year. Um, I mean, I, I, I can't speak a lot of what's going on out there. I, I don't know uh, much what's happening, but, um, you know, a couple of big losses like that, it's, it has got to be, I guess, a bit disheartening. But, um, look, their first grade side are, uh, seem to be in it at the moment. Um, and, and again, maybe it's just a situation where a little bit more match fitness and a few more games under the belt, they might start to trouble some teams. Yeah, I think they will. And, and definitely in that first half early, early season, they come out and they absolutely, you can see the highlights here. They, there's some big hits in it. Uh, Greens went up to Singleton. There was rumours that there was no bus going up, but that was to thwart Gareth Payne on, on, getting, on getting his chance to get on the bus. They didn't want him on it, apparently. But anyway, Greens went up there and it was clinical. They demolished them, really. Yeah, look, the, the Greens are a great outfit. You know, they um, they're going to be up there this year. Um, you know, they had a had a pretty strong season last year. They've lost a couple of players, but I think they've recruited quite well. Uh, obviously, Stacey coming back on board. You know, he's, he's a great coach. He's got the runs on the board there, and, and I think that uh, he'll do very well with the Grooms. Yeah, definitely will. And, and the last game, Hamilton Hawks took on the Tars, and and it was close at half time. There was, you know, there was a point in it, but then, you know. The Hamlin side, they're just too fit at the moment, and mate, they have a massive side as well. Yeah, very big, big fit, fast, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a juggernaut, and, and they are going to be really hard to stop. Yeah, definitely out and out favourites this year. We, we had a look at the, the, the little man who got the, he got the man of the match. We had a chat to him after the game uh, this week, Veach. He's unbelievable, he's one to watch out for. Well, Harry, Dust Handhouse, man of the match today, or is it Lloyd Christmas? 
Hey, sorry, go in. Is it Lloyd Christmas or Harry? Ah, oh, it's Harry, mate. <laughs> yeah, very good. You played good today. Played well above your weight, so you'll enjoy the Dust Hunt House Man of the Match feed. Yeah, definitely so. I hope they put on a bit of beef. <laughs> Hoping so. Yeah, no, it was good and solid game today. It was good uh, that we bounced back from the hard start. We, didn't, we started pretty poor, started slow, but we consolidated and built from there, which was nice. Very good. Um, good things from you this week. You forced, you forced yourself into the side. You played well above yourself today. It was, it was a good game. Yeah, it was good. Felt good out there. Just uh, still trying to get like, where they want me in the team, what my position is going to be, my sort of role, and trying to get out the, off the big fellas a bit more, S sort of do the lighter work and let them do the hard work and well, benefit from their hard work and their ball skills, really. Very good. All the best for the rest of the year, mate. So, hey, thanks, mate. Well, we're back, everybody, and as you can see, he does look very much like the character from Dumb and Dumber with that haircut there, but that's Scott Coleman's words, not myself, and rumour has it, the Goanna wrestling that they've had out there at Hamilton, it's been, it's been banned, Mark. Yeah, look, uh, oh, the Hawks boys, I believe, have taken it to the next level. It's, I mean, traditionally, the Goanna wrestle was just with a belt, like a, a leather belt. I believe those boys have been using a piece of chain. That's crazy. Uh, and, uh, you know, really sort of getting out there and getting involved, and, and I, I guess that that's probably a uh, a bit of the in-season training that Bubba's got him doing and, and obviously it's paying dividends at the moment. Well, I don't, don't know what I'd rather, the, the Goanna wrestle or the bird bath, mate. Well, <laughs> look, uh, I guess at the moment they've probably had to take over the Goanna wrestling as uh, Wellesie's, uh, Wellesie's not in town at the moment. But, uh, you know, whenever whenever Wellesie gets back, uh, you know, you, you've got to be sure that there's going to be a good bird bath here and there. I'll tell you what wasn't a bird bath and, and it's the Rams low percentage play of the week right now. Looking at Matt Barley, he has won the album Jesus Can't Play Rugby, as you can just see there in front of the computer. Matt Bartley, he's an out and out bar TV favourite. He's a special for this award nearly every week. But have a look at this, throws the punch, runs away. Classic Bartley. So that brings us to the business end of this week's Ruck Off, of course. We haven't had any complaints this week, which is a little bit disappointing, not, not really doing our job. So I'm looking for some controversy here from you, Mark, at the moment. Of course, we do have our top better fantasy tournaments in play at the moment uh, for all the Rams 2016 Premiership. It's a fantastic idea by our partners at Top Better. And are you having a go at that? Uh, yes, but uh, just remember, always bet responsibly. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Well, it's fantasy money anyway. So pretty much like playing Monopoly, but better. <laughs> In any case, we'll go through the first game, Nelson Bay versus Singleton. Yeah, Nelson Bay, they're at home again, three weeks in a row at the Groper Dome. They need to, to get a win up there for their home fans to keep coming along. They get, a, get, get good support there. Hattini's out, and big um, Shane Lalota is moved to inside centre. Yeah, look, Shane uh, in their game last week against Maitland, he made some good yards up the middle, um, very strong defensively too. Uh, their number eight, uh, eight uh, I believe he is. If, 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 uh, if he's out, look, that's going to be a bit of a loss to them. Um, Nelson Bay were quite good in the breakdown, I think, uh, in that first half. I think maybe six or seven strong pilfers at the breakdown there, so that's certainly an area where, where they're good. But uh, look, I, I think uh, Singleton, they tend to struggle away, and uh, I think that um, you know the Grove is looking for uh, their first winner home, I'd say they're probably going to get it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, Singleton, they've been collapsing harder in the second half than the mining up there at the moment. I guess if they're going to get a win, it'll be, it'll be Fifo to Nelson Bay this weekend. That's where all the money is, apparently, on the top tip of Fantasy Comp. Now, Carlton go to Lake Macquarie. Carlton, you know, as we've said before, they're, they're very disciplined. They've got an unchanged team from last week, I believe. Lake Macquarie, they're going to be physical early on, as, as we mentioned. That's, that's the type of pl players they are. Do you think this could intimidate the Carlton pack? Oh, look, the, the, I think there will be a bit of intimidation there. I mean, that's, that's what it's like when you go out and play out at Lake Macquarie. It's, it's a really tough, hostile environment to go in there but oh, I think that um it's know, the first home game for Merriweather. First, yeah, uh, I think that um, you know Merriweather will um, come home with the goods in the end. There, I, th I think they'll just be too strong. And Hamilton go out to Beaches. This is going to be an interesting match, I think, because the Beaches they've they're underestimated this year. They they were written off at the start of the year by I guess Jimmy Garner in the Herald, and I guess I didn't even figure them to be probably a, a top five contender. But they've shown the last the last couple of weeks they came from behind against Maitland last week. You know, same again with you guys. Yeah. They've certainly got something there. Yeah, look, uh, I think at the moment they're basically just, they're, they're playing with a um, nothing to lose kind of attitude. 
Uh, that being said though, uh, solid tight five. You got VAR at the back there at number eight, very, very strong. Uh, Mick Delore at 10, you know, very experienced uh, player and a very good player. Injury free too, Injury free which is moment, good. Which is which is the, the best thing for him. And then, um, you know, on their wings, you've got Lockie Wade and you've got uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew Delore there. Sorry, I nearly missed, I, I forgot which Delore I was talking about. There's scores of Delores out there. Thousands, <laughs> thousands of them. Uh, you got the Delores on the wing there and, um, yeah, they've got, they got speed to burn. So, look, I... I'm very reluctant to tip against Hamilton because they, they are that side, but I, I think the Southern Beaches team are, are going to trouble them this week. Yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be a tough ta tough task for Hamilton to come out there. They've had a had a pretty bruising game last week, so it'll be interesting to see if Bubba, I mean, Paul Dan's in as well, so so that, that's desperation in itself, isn't it? <laughs> uh, look, uh, little Dan, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's probably... We love uh, him. Uh, yeah, look, he's a, he's a good guy. I think he's about the fourth ranked Dan, though. <laughs> um, uh, no, nah, look, he, he, he adds a lot. Well, if you get the cousins in play, he's probably fifth or sixth. Well, yeah, actually, that, that'll probably drop him down a bit. Uh, look, he, look, very experienced, um, Paul Dan, and, um, you know, he, he'll come in and, and he'll add a cool head, and, um, uh, you know, he, I don't think they lose a lot by him coming in. Yeah, we love you, Danny, and he'll be on the show in a couple of weeks as well, so I'm sure, he'll, I'm sure he'll get it back. Uh, anyway, we, we go to uh, Tars versus Wanderers. This will be, again, a close match early on, but Wanderers is too well drilled, too fit. I think they're just going to come away with it. Rumours are though, Carmani might be back this week. Yeah, look, if, if that rumour is true, then then that'll add a huge, uh, that'll be a huge lift to uh, Waratah. Look, great player, um, you know, really, really fast, really skillful. And that's just something that uh, the Waratah back line, I think, been lacking a little bit at the moment. I mean, they lost Tim Riley at the back there. Uh, mate, he'd counter-attack you from, from anywhere, from 100 out, from 50 out, and, and they've probably just lost that punch. They've got a good solid forward pack there. Uh, but yeah, Wanderers, big, fast, fit, um, and, and really well drilled. Well, they've got those couple of players from the Gold, Gold Coast. They are playing again this week, and mate, they, they are class. So it'll take a bit of time for them to click with the side, but yeah. they're going to be trouble come semi-final time, the Waratahs. I guess getting to the feature, Mac. Boom, 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 boom. Up at Mayland. Special shout out to Mayland. They are launching their 1877 club with their 76 grand final teams. Getting honoured at that match. It's going to be a big game, a big crowd up there. It's going to be massive up there. And you guys have the, I guess, pleasure of getting up there against the home crowd. And, and having played up there myself, I know when it's a big crowd at Mayland, they're in your face and it could be mentally draining for, for your young side. Yeah, look, it's, it's uh, again, it's it's like the Grove of Dome, it's like going out to Lake Macquarie. It's a tough task going up to up to Maitland there. Uh, you know, they got their tails in the air at the moment. I believe that they're uh, undefeated in all grades. All grades. Um, so, and, and obviously their first home game this season. Uh, but, um, you know, there's... Well, every team in this competition, you've got to play them. You've got to play them at your home, you've got to play them away. And, and regardless of their occasion or where they're sitting on the table, we've got to go up there and we've got to play our game and, and, um, and try and get stuck, in, stuck into them the best we can. Yeah, definitely. One particular player I'm impressed with, your number eight. He, yeah. He's unbelievable. Newton Tanya Newa, I believe you uh, uh, you say it. Uh, a couple of boys have actually nicknamed him Newton Tanzania. That's yeah, uh, nice. a little bit easier to say. Uh, Newton come to us, uh, he's from Zimbabwe, from Zimbabwe. Um, just uh, picked him up this year, just in, enrolled in uh, uni um, and uh, yeah he's, he's been really good for us, uh, made, made a lot of metres out, out of the back of, um, off the back of the scrum and, and in, in broken play so he's, he's been a real fine for us this year. Yeah definitely and Frost as well for you guys, I think he's been playing pretty well, needs to probably run the ball maybe a little bit more. Yeah look, <coughs> he's, he's young, uh, he's, a, he's a very very talented player, uh, he's in the, I believe he's in the Country Colts team, he's in the Newcastle Colts team. Um, I guess it just needs a little bit more experience with his decision making and things like that. You know, as you said, uh, maybe run a little bit more, maybe kick a little bit more, just just picking the right time when to do those those things. Maybe needs to spend some time on the boat with Hoggy. Yeah, something like that. I think uh, you know, Hoggy's told me a couple of stories where he's out in uh, you know mountainous surf and it's uh, pouring rain, and uh, I think that might be a situation that try to tries to test your resilience a little bit, and that mm. might be something that uh, could certainly help. Getting wakeboarding off the back or something. Something like that uh, you know um, yeah just maybe binoculars out off the front there looking for um, whales or something like that that would that'd certainly help. Well very good we that's your chance to have a chat we had the opportunity to get out to Maitland this week and had a chat with their coach Mick Hickling another young coach who's doing great things out there here he is. Yeah hopefully we can get a good crowd
know, particularly after the start we've had. So we're hoping to get a good crowd here first uh, first home game. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you can see it in here. The boys are doing some work. Um, we've got a club called the 1877 Club who are uh, doing some work. A bit of an old boys club or a bit of a members club. And they've uh, done a lot of work around the club. And they're hoping to get a good turnout here on, on Saturday as well to support the team. So looking forward to being back on, on home turf. Yeah, and playing at university as well. They've got a, a fairly young coach at the helm as well. How do you yeah. think they're going to play? Yeah, they'll be probably smarting a bit after last week. I um, I've seen a bit of the game against Beaches there, and they'll obviously looking to come out and uh, get a win on the board. And they'll be uh, yeah, they got the wood on us uh, both times last year. They beat us here and, and down there last year, so uh, I anticipate they'll turn up um, very hungry for a win. So it's going to be a real challenge for us. So that was the round a preview for Ruck Off this week. Of course, get involved in the top better fantasy competitions all around. Uh, for top better for the 2016 Rams NHRU Premiership. It's a good t tournament, it's close. There's $200 up for grabs each week in that as well. And we're gonna have a little bit of fun now. Of course, rugby's a game about songs we saw at the top of the broadcast. But I'm gonna bring in some poetry, Mark. And I'm gonna start with, I used to work at Chicago, an old department store. You used to work at Chicago? I don't work there anymore. A lady came in for a hammer. A hammer from the store? A hammer she wanted, but nailed she got. I bet you don't work there anymore. Now, I used to work in Chicago, an old department store. You used to work in Chicago? I don't work there anymore. Uh, a lady came in for some carpet. Some carpet from the store? Carpet she wanted, but laid she got. Ooh, you don't work I there don't anymore. anymore. I used to work in Chicago. An old department store? I used to work in Chicago. You don't work there anymore. A lady came in for a cat. A cat from the store? A cat she wanted, but meow and I got. <laughs> you don't work there anymore. And that's it for Ruck Off this week. We'll be back next week with another episode, episode four, special guest galore. We'll be around the grounds and next week we'll check out the new fangled judiciary. Bar TV Sports would like to thank Top Better. Get in the game at topbetter.com.au. And Cornelia's Crump, the Bar TV Sports beverage of choice. And Rams Loans for supporting the 2016 NHRU Premiership.